Hey, Jim's class. Um, man, we, <laughs> we were just taking a little bit of break at the end of the school year, and you can see these gorgeous trees here in the Redwoods. Amazing place. But um, let's see, part three with your questions. Um, you asked about warning signs in Rwanda post-genocide. Um, you know, and then you asked about how they deal with all the deceased, all the people who died. Um, I, we could go a bunch of different directions with your questions, but what I'm going to say is um, I don't have a lot of memory from the year and a half after Rwanda, after the genocide that I was there in Rwanda. It was just kind of busy rebuilding and everything. But as I've been back in, in the past six, eight years, probably ten times or more, um, I'm, I'm always struck with... Uh, just the courage and resilience of the people, the stories that I hear while we're back there. Um, when you talk about warning signs, I mean, Rwanda has so much more signs of hope and health and growth. Let me just take the young people, for example. Rwanda is a um, really young nation in terms of demographics. About 70% of the country is 30 years old or younger. Uh, half the country are people who were born post-genocide, and of that young population, um, there's an organization called Never Again in Rwanda, where students have banded together about, I think they have about 45,000 students, I think it is, 45,000, yeah, in 250 high schools, 31 universities working to build peace. Another one's Proclaimers of Love and Peace. Um, the, uh, Rwanda, uh, really, the way they've dealt with all who died, I mean, um, you don't forget. You don't forget. You never will. And, and not like you're ever supposed to forget. But, um, but they really focus on what they have. And and that's why lately it's been a phrase I've kind of shared a, so many places I go. In Rwanda, you learn that, that it's what you do next. That's what a high school kid wrote after he'd been to Rwanda. It's what you do next that defines you. Or or um, this idea of not focusing on what was taken from us, but on what remains, what we can do. We're not defined by what was taken. We're defined by what we do with what remains. And so there's a lot of reason for hope in Rwanda. There's a place too for everybody. The empowerment of women, I could go on and on about about the positive signs in Rwanda. Um, but the last question I'll talk about here in this part is about talking to our kids about the genocide. We really didn't for many years until um, they started asking questions about it. And still, we have conversations. Last, uh, two weeks ago, had conversations with her daughters about about um, what was happening over there, what it was like. It's an ongoing journey. We just kind of wait for them to ask about it. But I have to say, as a proud dad, I, I really think that our, our um, I've seen uh, so many evidences in our in in our children. Our well, they're adults now, but um, of of including people, being inclusive. I think I think some of what they learn there. Um, had to do with uh, recognizing sacrifice, um, also being willing to put somebody else first. And I see um, a great, uh, all of them involved in service and, and inclusion. That, that really makes me proud. So thanks, guys. See ya.